This video is all about how I made my IKEA Pax wardrobe, how I measured it to make sure that it would fit in the exact spot I needed it, how I anchored it to the wall without using these little anchors, and lots more tips on how to build this in the easiest way possible. Because yeah, I made some mistakes, but you don't have to. I have this Hemnes dresser and I just thought that all the space above it was just a waste of space. So I want to build my Pax wardrobe in this space. The first thing you want to think about is what size you have available to you. So um, I actually just measured like this dresser first to start with. Okay, and I was like, how much bigger or smaller would I be comfortable with the wardrobe being, right? So I actually took this full distance from here all the way to this wall. Um, so for me, this distance is like 80 inches and there is a door here, but we never open it because there's no screen on it. So the bugs would just come in and there's no balcony. Anyways, whatever. So, and then I was like, okay, how wide would it be? So this existing thing was like 20 inches wide. So is it okay if it's a little bit wider, if it comes out more? Um, so that's the first thing you want to think about when you're designing your wardrobe. You can check the sizes online. I went with the organizers that were 39 and 3 8 inches wide so I could fit two of them in this space. I'm also just so excited to get rid of this because it has accumulated just so much junk on top. Like I just am one of those people where unfortunately where there's a spot surface things will just pile up and so it wasn't really a great use of the space and it also looked really messy. Okay, so you absolutely have to use the IKEA PAX planning tool on their website. Like there's no way to build this without it because what's really cool is um, it has all your dimensions. You can play around with all the different inserts you want, right? So you can swap things out, right? So like I know that this is going to fit. This is 200 centimeters. Okay, and like everything here is on the sidebar so you can like adjust the size of the frame. You can adjust all the different types of doors that they have, right? Um, and then also when you're done, right? Like, and, and as you build it, the price will adjust. So if you take things out or, or add things in, once you have finalized, what's really also great is that, um, yes, yeah, so they show you what's like in stock because, uh, you know, like obviously you want to make sure you have all the parts, but, and they have like all the shopping lists. If you decide to go in store, um, where okay, this. I highly, highly recommend that you actually print this out. So this shows you in what whole number, because you're going to be putting all of these in, what whole number you're going to be adding which of the different um, shelves or drawers, right? So like in, if you count them, well, number 64 from the bottom, you know, that's where your shelf's going to go. Um, and it's like that for both. Yep. And one other thing that I think is just fantastic is that you can actually email this to you. So if you're like, I need to work on this later, I need to run this by my partner or whatever, you can hit save for later and they send you an email with a code that you can come back and you just pick up where you left off. If you can, I highly recommend that you get this delivered to you. Though there's so many boxes and they're so big. Don't worry about us, only like 50 more boxes to come. <laughs> what? Yeah, and plus all the like the drawers, the inserts. <laughs> so as you can see, living in a three-story town home, it wasn't the easiest to bring everything up, but somehow Avas managed to do it. So in these clips, you can kind of see the corner of our wardrobe. We kind of did this in the wrong order. That's why I'm showing you to remove your baseboards first before you actually build anything. All right, so to remove your trim, you just want to cut the caulk off. So you just score along the edge. Um, I actually do not like removing trim at all, but <laughs> it has to be secured to the wall, right? So. Then you go in with a pry bar and a mallet and just try and put it at the seam and try and pull it off. Um, I really struggled, so I got a vast to help me. And man, our builder loves to use nails. That's way too many nails. Okay, I'm gonna start building one of the IKEA Pax wardrobes. That is the goal. Avast is gonna come up soon, the kids are asleep. Um, I consider myself to be like an expert IKEA furniture builder. I hope I'm not jinxing myself, right? But um, my one tip is that when you're like looking at these pictures, make sure you really pay close attention to like the direction of the holes, like count the number of holes and that kind of thing. Like that 
um, is going to prevent you from doing a lot of rework. We built the two frames. It wasn't that difficult, but you just want to be mindful of your height of your ceiling to be able to stand them upright. We didn't have an issue because we have nine foot ceilings. Um, but the issue we did have is that our bedroom is really small. And so it was actually really hard to build it in the bedroom. I don't really know where we could have built it because it's not like we can fit it through a, a doorway. Um, but it's just something to be mindful of. Like maybe we should have moved the bed to one side. Got this built while my newborn Sabrina was sleeping and just as we stood it up she woke up and honestly I still can't believe that we made this with a newborn. So if I can do this you can definitely do it. It will take some time and patience but look at that. Oh my god she's so small back then. Something really strange happened when we tried to stand up one of the organizers, even though we had hammered the foot in, it just popped right out and there was no way to get it back in. So what we decided to do was just use a ton of liquid nails and goop it all up and we crossed our fingers and that worked. You just need it to be in so you can adjust the height. And this is really exciting because now we have the two organizers and we need to mount them to the wall and we also Hopefully. need to um, attach them together. Okay. I'm truly trying not to be frustrated because we built the PAX wardrobes no problem but here's what happened um when Avas put the anchor in basically the anchor fell into the wall like when he was screwing it in so obviously that's not secure <laughs> like the anchor didn't open up it just for some reason went into the wall so we can't reuse that hole that's the problem with anchors right like once that hole has been used it's done so so uh, the only other option we have now is to actually use like a plate of wood. So we're gonna use a piece of wood going all the way across the back on the wall. And then that will be like our wood to secure it to. So we'll try that tomorrow. Wah, wah, wah. So because of that hole that went through, we actually created like, I guess a false stud. It's not a false stud, it's like, a stud that's basically outside of the drywall. So what I did was this piece of wood, I made sure that all these screws went into a stud. Okay, this is a great alternative if something like this happens to you or you need to screw somewhere where you need um, to, for it to be really secure. This one, when I was screwing it in, I was like, this doesn't feel right. So what it was, I actually just screwed a bunch of holes like underneath these to make sure that it was going into a stud and this one was not so when I did these two they just went right through into drywall so this one did so I just moved the screw over so here you can see like the wood goes through the brackets yes. so that's going to be our stud that's going to be super secure way better than anchor I know some of you might think this is a little bit over the top, but we have three very small kids and I just don't want anything to ever fall on them. So we always kind of go above and beyond when we're anchoring things. So making sure it went into a stud made it feel a lot more secure and safe for me. Your packed orders are most likely going to have a gap. So this is why it's really important to have the clamp. So you're going to clamp them together, okay? And then they have these screws that come with it. And we're going to apply one at the top and one at the bottom, and they'll be totally flush. So. All right, here we go. I actually thought that like installing these would be like the easiest part and putting on the drawers would be hard, but this really proved to be a challenge, but um, we got it anchored really securely to the wall. Now we're just at the home stretch. I built my drawers kind of concurrently while we were building the frames because this is an easy one person job, but I found the frames to really need two people. And when I say that building the drawers is an easy one person job, it's really like a hard job to do <laughs> with two kids. 
but I let my kids get involved and it was pretty um, simple and straightforward for them. I do try and involve my kids in DIY wherever it's easy and safe for them and I feel like building IKEA furniture is actually a great skill for them to have um, and it's a great way for them to actually like transfer their skills of Legos which they really love to do to real life furniture and it gives them a bit of confidence too. Wow that's really good John. You're actually nailing on it. Wow. Cool. Now can you get by your turn too? Watch your thumb, move your thumb. Show. Mama, did you do it? Oh, yes, turn. Goodbye, your turn. I have to nurse Sabrina. This is really exciting. Now we're at the point where we're going to be installing all the interior drawers and trays. And my number one tip is to actually label all the holes with a pencil. So just go ahead and number all the holes from the bottom, starting with one all the way to the top. This will make it so much easier when you actually need to install any of the drawers and trays. I found it easiest to start installing everything from the bottom up. Um, especially because that's the way everything's labeled, like the very bottom hole is labeled as number one. In case you're confused about this view, I'm installing the pant hanger, but it's a bird's eye view. And make sure to actually measure your pants before you install this, because mine were too long. This is pretty exhilarating, like check this out. This is where I'm gonna put all my jewelry. I'm so excited. I feel like I'm finally becoming an adult. Um, because where I put my jewelry before was like this like earring holder I had from Claire's when I think I was like 16. It still works, but like, you know, this is just like a grown-up's wardrobe. It says, remember I said I'm like an expert IKEA builder? I, I take it all back. I take it all back, but we got one. <laughs> Look how nice this is. Pull out, pull out, push it in. Oh, the slow glide. I won't be able to reach my hand above the top rail, so I wanted to have a space for out of season clothes. So I'm using the scub organizers, which are also from Ikea, and I just measured the distance to make sure that they would fit and leave only that much space. And of course, I'm so excited, so I just wanted to hang some things up and see how they look and just make sure that the height was right. Also, check out how good those organizers are. Do they not just fit perfectly? Now I've got Serena's clothes all up there. I can already see that I am going to love this organizer. Next week, I can't wait to show you how I attached the doors, made a custom bangle organizer, and attached this really cool crown molding. See you then.